car made out of carbon fiber and sheet metal. Dear Lord. Back down to third for the last tire sale. Pretty much four wheels. Oh! oh! Hello, gents. Banny here. Welcome back to another episode of Can I Survive the Norch Life? In this episode, I'd like you to join me as we take the Alfa Romeo 155 Ti V6 for a lap around the ring. Just a bit of specs about this car. We are running a naturally aspirated 2.5 liter V6 engine producing 420 horsepower at 11,000 RPM. So this thing screams. <laughs> I don't think I've actually driven a car on the series yet that revs out this much. We will be putting the engine limiter up so we can actually make use of the entire 11,000 RPM range that we have. Paired with that, we have a six-speed manual transmission. Now, as far as I'm aware, I think the real-life car had a six-speed sequential. However, in a subtle Corsa, and I think some specific years of the Alfa Romeo 155, they had a six-speed manual transmission as well. Although, don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. I couldn't find uh, that much information about it it is all-wheel drive and if i am not mistaken it's roughly like 33 percent front to 67 percent rear power distribution so it's still very much rear biased in terms of power however you do feel the drive out of the corner from the front wheels so that is very important to keep in mind in terms of weight we're looking at just over a thousand kg now this car was is literally made out of sheet metal and carbon fiber with a pretty much like a tube uh, like a tubular space frame inside so apparently i was doing some research on the car as i always do about the cars that uh, i drive just so i can give you a bit of information apparently the car was so flimsy in, in terms of like the, the body panels were so flimsy that the mechanics had to be careful not to lay um on the roof or not to lean up against the roof because they would dent it so these guys were basically running around on a glorified lunchbox this is the only foreign production car that won the deutsche touristenwagen meisterschaft series i listen if any germans are watching I, I sincerely apologize okay anyway enough about the car let's uh get everything set up head out on track and i'll see you on the okay gents so we're just on the outlap here in terms of setup changes i went ahead and i dropped the tire pressures just a tad so we're hitting 30 psi hot we're also running the dtm uh stuff split so that's the softest tire that the grippiest tire that i can put on this car we also went ahead and upped the engine limiter to 103 percent so that means that we can rev out all the way to 13,000 rpm which sounds like this beautiful um apart from that setup is completely stuck yeah just a fair warning i have driven this car a lot in the past a lot, a lot. Never on this setup. This is the first time driving the car on this setup. Yeah, I know how the car works. I, I know how she operates. It's been a long time since I've driven her. Maybe there's still some warming up to do, but this probably, you know, that's what the outlap is for. So I'll get, I'll go ahead, I'll get around the outlap, and I'll come back to you when we're just about to do our flyer. So, yeah. Okay, gents, so we're just coming up to the end of the outlap now. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and get her slowed right down. As always, I uh, will shut up for the first few seconds just so that you can enjoy the beautiful symphony of this baby F1 engine with this V6 thing to 13,000 RPM. So here we go. And already, as you can see, this Alpha, being a touring car from the 90s, absolutely no slouch. As I said in the intro, probably we are in a pretty much a glorified lunchbox here. So a car made out of carbon fiber and sheet metal. Dear Lord, it is absolutely no surprise how Alpha managed to dominate the DTM series with this car. A bit of fun facts about this car, the engine that we're running did actually produce 12,500 RPM. I don't know what I'm doing with the gears here. We can go fifth gear over. Blue flats. Oh, God. Go down to fourth. So, this car actually did produce 12,500 RPM. The engine weighs a measly 110 kg, which is absolutely insane to say that this car is a Oh, hands full to drive would be a complete and total understatement oh, I don't want to know 
the testicular fortitude that needed to be possessed by the DTM drivers of that era. I'm sure that's somewhere down here in the sea well in a specific uh, a specific pocket just for their manhood. Talking and driving this car is most definitely no easy feat. It is four-wheel drive, as you can see. The whole point of this car is to slide her around and uh, at slip angle or whatever the fuck that's called. So we will be sliding a lot, even though I will try to minimize it. The exit speed of this Italian monster oh, is really unmatched. Also, I have to point out, out of all of the DTM cars, now this being both in real life and in the game, this car has the best aero by miles. It is quite literally feels like a little baby F1 car made for touring car racing. Now that that is not prime Italian engineering at its finest. Pushing 420 Italian horses at 13,000 RPM in a car that weighs a thousand kg. Seems like a recipe for disaster almost, but boy was it the formula for success for Alpha during oh, during the time. It does take a special kind of driver to make this car go fast. Which I don't think I actually am one of those drivers. I cannot believe what it's like to take. Okay, this corner. Always have to shut up for this corner because I am a pleb. Yep, there we go. We get it wrong once again. That's all good. Oh, I don't know what kind of testicular fortitude is needed to take an Italian uh, beast like this around the ring and do it fast. Oh my god. It literally feels like we're in a glorified lunchbox. But boy, is it fun. Mud curva is definitely not flat now coming up here. We would need to drop down to fourth gear even. Don't go wide. Okay. You see, the thing is, I don't even have the, the guts in the game that some of these drivers had in real life. Go down to third gear for this corner here. We could do it second, but that's okay. Should have definitely done it second there. That was painfully slow. Now the carousel. Let's try second gear. Hopefully she doesn't whip us around in second gear. She does like to do that. Now this car is relatively easy to drive. If you're not, you know, going balls to the wall. Although it is incredibly hard to drive oh, very fast. Let's take fourth gear through this chicane here. Stay off the curbs. She does not like these big curbs. Down to third gear now, coming to, as I always say in every video, it's getting a bit old now, but I don't really care. This is the best piece of racetrack in the entire world. Don't at me. There is no piece of racetrack that will ever come close to sector two at the North Life. Take third gear over the hill here. We'll get to fourth just before the bottom. Fourth gear for a short while. Back down to third. Let the arrow just guide us through. Get the nose pointed. Stay in third gear. Ref her all the way out to 13,000 RPM. Back on the power. Stay in third here. Bouncing off the limiter. Wow. Round YouTube corner. Extremely slow. Up to fourth for a second. Back down to third. Dear Lord. We are pretty much sliding everywhere. I'm trying to be as smooth as I possibly can with this car. However, as I said, 420 horses of pure Italian fury are not easy to tame, especially when it weighs less than a, than my fucking Polo. This car weigh, quite literally weighs less than my Volkswagen Polo, so pushing 420 horsepower is definitely not easy to put down. To be nice and smooth in the final sector here. Third gear on the power, up to fourth, back down to third for the last carousel, pretty much four wheel. Oh! oh! Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, Ooh, we almost threw 
that entire lap away. Just at the end of the carousel there. A lot of sliding. A lot, a lot of sliding. Ooh. Okay, so in terms of raw pace, we're definitely not going to beat out the M3 GTR. That's a completely different class of car. I don't even expect... I mean, there's, the time's already gone for that car. Uh, this feels like it will be the second fastest car that we have, though. If I can drive her properly. That wasn't the, the best of laps, but... By all means, she is no princess. I'll tell you that much. I'm fully out of breath driving this car already. We've had quite a few moments. Nothing to really write home about. I do think the Quattro is actually going to be a bit faster. Go look up here. Okay, let's go. And across the line, a 729. So the, the Quattro was a bit faster. Let's pull over here. So 729, I believe we got a 723 in the Quattro. I'm not 100% sure. I think roughly around that time. I mean, it is slower than the Quattro, but I think, I don't think that's the car. I think that's just um, a skill issue from the driver. We had, we had a few moments there. Yeah, wow. What an absolute Italian animal. This car is uh, really something to behold, honestly. And just, 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 just listen to this for a sec. It's a baby F1 car, man. These fucking Italians built a little miniature F1 car to race in DTM and they beat everyone. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, I think uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll leave it there. The lap was not the best, but I think you got a, a, a good idea for what a headache this car is to drive around here. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in episode five.